welcome to the stage, Tim Robbins. Hello! I'm here today to endorse Bernie Sanders as the next president of the United States. Yesterday, I was in Avenal State Prison. Louder. Say it louder. Lean into it. Gotcha. Yesterday, I was in Avenal. I'm here today to endorse Bernie Sanders to be president of the United States. Yesterday I was in Albanal State Prison watching a play written and performed by 25 incarcerated men. Black, white, brown, old, young, northerners, southerners, all now creating together, all serving life sentences. The play was about racism and forgiveness and redemption. The main character didn't want his son to be friends with a black man. And in the course of the play, after the classmate's death, and after his son's near death, the racist man had a transformation. He finds redemption. He embraces the beating heart of his former object of hate, the heart now beating in his own son's body. It was an incredible performance, and it left the audience stunned. People were weeping. The man on the stage, the family members that had come to join him, even the warden, even the warden. I came away from that prison with a hope for the future. If these men in a level two prison can find the courage to defy racial division, stand in a room and create respect, support, and love of their former enemy. If these men in this dangerous and stressful environment of a prison can rise above their former hatred, then so can we. We're living in times of bitter rancor, hateful rhetorics thrown around, divisions in families, kin swearing off each other for political reasons. There's a raging discontent underneath this robust economy. Lots of fighting. And we're asked to take sides, to define ourselves by our differences. And we are encouraged to distrust the other to hate the other. And as long as we buy into that, as long as we are fighting with our brother, our co-worker, our neighbor, we will never unite against the ones that are profiting from this division. We have so much that unites us, so we all want clean air, healthy water. We all want jobs that pay us enough so that we can hold our heads up with dignity. We all want to provide a future, a better future for our children. We all want to be cared for when we are ill and to not worry that this illness will lead to our bankruptcy or possibly homelessness. Most of us want that for our neighbor, too. Do you? Yet despite all this rancor and divisiveness being thrown around these days, I still believe that there is goodness in the hearts of all of us. And I still believe that perspectives can shift, eyes can be opened, hearts too. I'm endorsing Bernie Sanders today because I believe that when he is elected, 
He will lead this country with a spirit of inclusiveness and in the service of the people he represents, not the money that got him there. In service to the people, a basic concept of democracy, but a forgotten one. The president is not a king. He works for us. Bernie has always governed that way. He's been a faithful representative of his constituents in Vermont for years. He has never abused his position for personal gain. He's been standing up for the poor, the disenfranchised, the shunned, the oppressed for years. As a college student, he was arrested for protesting against racist housing discrimination. For his entire life, he has marched on picket lines with striking workers and stood up for immigrant rights and marched in opposition to war. He's what my grandfather used to call the genuine article. I support Bernie Sanders because I believe he will lead from a moral center born of a lifelong commitment to serving the needs of the poor, the American worker, the single mother, the family farmer, the student in debt, the couple struggling to keep their home, the beautiful souls that constitute the core, the majority of this country. I support Bernie because I believe him when he says that he will declare a state of emergency on his first day in office to address the climate crisis that threatens this planet. I support Bernie because he is the candidate that has the broadest base of support, a volunteer base of a million strong, ready to knock on doors. The kind of support that can motivate and sustain the changes that will be necessary to bring bold transformation to this country. It's not going to be easy. There are many obstacles in the way. But yesterday, I witnessed the impossible come true at Avenal State Prison. After the play, the men were talking with each other, their guests visiting with their family. And a friend of mine pointed to two men who were talking to each other, laughing, hugging. It was one of our formerly incarcerated teachers, Jason, and one of the writers of the play, still incarcerated, Pedro. You see that scar on Jason's head? It's from a knife fight with Pedro from 10 years ago. They used to be enemies looking for blood. And now, in this room, they were collaborators, partners, friends. There in that moment, I saw the future manifested in the purest form of forgiveness and the overwhelming power of love. The way forward for all of us must be through unity, not division. We can be passionate and certain about our candidate and do so with open ears, with a respect for differences and a love for even those that do not want to listen. We need to find new alliances, unexpected friends. We need to sow the seeds of unity with our actions and our deeds. 
Practice tolerance and wield the overwhelming power of love when we are advocating for Bernie Sanders. When Bernie Sanders says, not me, us, he is reminding us that it is a movement, not an individual, that will transform this country. It is all of us as a collective, not the cult of one, that will bring change. And it is exactly because of that perspective, that humility, that understanding of how democracy works, that I wholeheartedly endorse Bernie Sanders as the next president of the United States. Please welcome to the stage a man who needs no introduction, Dr.